Okay, today, uh, at long last, many people have asked me how I've recently learned to swing a bit faster, my club head speed. Um, I've been working on the best way to communicate it, and I think I'm gonna give it a shot. What do you think, do you wanna know? Yes. You do? I must know. Okay. And the way that I make um, force and, and speed in the swing is by mostly lateral motion, so motion towards the target. Um, there are three forces that will create speed, which would be lateral, vertical, and rotational or torque force. Uh, in my case, one being horizontal is very out of balance with the others. So yes, I can use that force to create speed, but it's not necessarily very efficient. And it's not the best in terms of controlling uh, left and right dispersion where the ball goes. So basically the concept I learned uh, from guys at Swing Catalysts, which is the plates I'm standing on, which measures the force in your feet, is that I need to learn to, in the downswing and on the way through to the ball, produce some of this type of motion, which in simple terms is basically just a force coming out of my front foot going upward and backward. So as I'm coming down in the downswing, I am moving laterally towards the target, that's great. At a certain point, that needs to stop and it actually needs to start working back the other way. That's what helps you clear your forward side and hit decent shots. Let me try to hit a ball that kind of, I don't know, more or less looks like how I normally swing. Uh, that would be a pretty common miss for me, a bit of a, a block with the iron. Um, not that I can't mix in the occasional pull as well, but if I kind of don't think too much and just make a swing, I often hit that kind of push on the golf course. Right now is gonna be the time when I start moving this way towards the target, which is fine. We do want some of that. But it kind of goes on for way too long. I'm still moving towards the target. Maybe now I'm trying to stop. And you can kind of see this sort of sloppy mess of lead side. Hands and neck and shoulders are kind of getting jammed up. A little on the flippy side with the hands. And then when you kind of get through the shot, you're sort of trying to save it with the last little bit of the body and you will notice sort of the, the spine and lead leg are on a bit of a, a, in this case, forward side tilt. So I'd like to be a little bit more vertically stacked on my forward side. And again, that just basically means that I haven't produced enough of that opposite force that I mentioned at the start of the video. The purple graph here, which is the uh, horizontal force is, is very out of balance with the other forces. Uh, I don't need that much horizontal force, or if I did, I would certainly need to balance it better with, with other ones. And I won't bore you to tears with all the nuts and bolts of this today anyway. Let's just go into the bay again and talk about a way to sequence the swing better, balance that kind of force, those three forces there, and see if we actually end up producing more speed with hopefully less effort. So a drill that many people may have seen uh, just related to like ground force drills, a drill you may have seen if you've been to the studio, is basically placing something around kind of knee height on your forward side, give yourself a little bit of space. Um, just as sort of an obstacle training drill, an initial kind of way to get a sense of Yes, I want to have a bit of room to move horizontally, but at a certain point, I kind of need to post up on this lead side. Most people are not going to have access to this kind of system, maybe won't be able to get assessed, but a good coach can visually see what I showed you on the screen and know that a good way to start is to kind of force you with an obstacle that you don't bump into to start moving a little bit more this way. Now, I've worked with that with many people. And, and myself, uh, and I do find it to be pretty effective, um, but I do think that maybe it could be taken uh, one step further. So messing around in the shop with some tension bands, which I use um, on the wall behind me for some turn stuff, I kind of thought, what if I were to force myself um, with tension pulling me in the opposite direction of what I want? So I've got a, a rather uh, firm tension band here, kind of rigged up to the floor. It's more or less, if I just relax, it's pulling me downward and right, which is good because in the downswing, I want to go upward and left or back. So being pulled down and, and forward is going to force me to do more in order to not be pulled that way, which is basically producing the up and back force with the lead side, which is what we need. There's been some trial and error with this. I haven't hurt myself yet. Um, don't watch this and just think I'm gonna go do this right away. 
I can't tell you that I've tested this with anyone except myself, so please don't do this and then tell me that you hurt yourself or someone else. But let's hit a few shots and see what it does. Uh, we'll measure it on the plates, we'll see what the ball flight does, and we'll observe the high-speed cameras. So let's start with the obvious stuff. The ball went straighter, great. Uh, didn't push it, didn't feel like I was gonna push it, didn't feel like I was gonna have to save it with my hands. I know that's a bit anecdotal, but that's what it felt like to me. Club head speed was slightly faster, if anything, although I, I can't say I tried to swing faster. This band is pulling me fairly aggressively downward and to my right, which is great because I wanna produce a force out of this foot that kinda goes upward and to my left. So if I don't fall over, if I don't tip over, then I know this foot is doing that in order to keep me standing up. So there is some horizontal movement there, which is great. It's done, it seems to be done now. That's different. Now it's actually moving up and around. I will put these side by side in a second, but just with my eye, having seen myself hit a couple of balls, I can tell you that that does look quite a bit better. That spine orientation is more vertical. So let's put them up side by side and take a, take a look. So that's an impact position. That's where I made the first swing where I told you I was moving horizontally for too long. That's the second swing where I use my lead side a bit better. So I have, I have, I have physically moved quite a bit. Sort of the sternum, the pelvis, the head is physically, one, it's higher, which is very important because if it's higher, that means I'm pushing up more at an earlier time. And one, it's way less ahead of the ball. So you actually have a chance to release it without kind of saving it with your hands. Now again, it wasn't really a backswing drill, but if you look at my backswing position, that's before, kind of tilty back to the target, that's a little bit more the way it should be. Let's move past impact. You can see before, I'm sort of low with the head, I'm bunched up. Again, not perfect by any means, I don't play for a living, but you can see how much higher the head is and how much further back, the whole body is further back and up, which in my case, not everyone's case, is actually a good thing. And then you flow it through a little bit further into the finish, looks pretty good there. That does not. This person looks like they just hit it sideways left and they're about to throw a club or an expletive. So in terms of creating more speed, addressing kind of like the deficiencies and how you use those forces, like me having way too much of one and not nearly enough of another and the timing of them being an issue, you will definitely pick up speed that way. In my opinion, almost more importantly, you, you sequence the swing better, so you produce a straighter ball flight. You have more control over the club face. Uh, and at that point, I think confidence wise, people will swing faster even still. So for me, I know there's a little bit of uh, hesitation. When I'm coming down and I know like, oh boy, and I need to save this with my hands, I know I'm slowing down, I know it. Uh, and I've measured with, with the quad on the golf course and I swing slower than in here, I think for that reason, because just the confidence as you get down to the ball is just, I don't know where this thing is gonna go. I feel like I have to manually save it, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. So what I wanna do now is do that drill a few times start to gain the confidence of the ball flight and the sequencing. And I might try my luck at pushing myself to a personal best club head speed. So this is a 34 degree seven iron. I, if I can get to 150 mile an hour ball speed, that would be far and away the highest I've ever had with a, with a seven iron. And if I can get that club head speed up to 110, again, that would be up there. Okay, so that ball speed's within f six miles an hour. One oh five. Yeah, these are good. It's more important to me that all of these felt like the ball was just gonna go reasonably online. I didn't feel flinchy. And I can't normally swing at 105 with that little effort. So I know it's producing more efficiency. 110 would be, would be a push, but I need to take, I, I don't think I can do it with an elastic band. I think I have to take it off. Six, 145, okay. Okay. 2.2 .2 miles an hour to the ball speed number. It's gonna be 
slower. So I, I hear, here's what I bet is going to happen. The more swings I make after taking the band off, it will start slowing down. I guarantee you. That one felt like more effort, but it came out at less speed because I know the sequencing was junk. Interesting, eh? As mentioned earlier, it would be nice if you could do a drill five times and completely change your motion. Not realistic. This thing is literally pulling my pants off. If, if I got to 110, 150 and my pants ripped off into the screen, yes. That's something people might endure a YouTube ad to watch. I will tell you this is legitimately the best my swing has ever felt. It's good. That's why you can't just go at you can't just go at it blindly. You gotta there's gotta be some technical pursuit to it. Like for me, if I try to swing harder, as you see, whenever I get two, three swings after I'm doing this drill, they start slowing down. Because it's just effort for the sake of effort. Nope. All right, I got pretty close. So 148.4 was within a mile and a half of my goal, and then we got with what, 2.2 within club? It's actually slower. It's actually crazy. <laughs> really crazy. If there's one thing I've learned from this, effort is important, but I find technical improvements, just moving better, sequencing better, removing barriers to your technique, like open club face and stuff like that, will actually make a huge difference in how fast you can swing, more so than only thinking I'm going to swing faster, I'm going to do speed training. I don't personally find that it's that effective compared to really cleaning up this type of stuff. I hit this one here with the band attached, around a 105 club head speed, 145 ball speed, club moving pretty well. Then took it off and tried to produce some effort, but I still really had the feel, I guess. I kind of primed myself from the drill. And then right after, that was pretty much my best, my best rep. The, the shot after I got greedy because I thought, oh, I'm, I'm right there. Let me just swing harder to produce the 110. I then swung slower. And then I tried to do it again, and I swung slower again. I, I think, you know, there's, there's probably people that will disagree with me. I just think that um, speed-wise, you have a lot more to be gained through better technique than just speed training. That's what I think. If your technique is flawless and you don't think there's any limiters in the way you move your body, the way you turn, the way you sequence, your risk conditions, that kind of stuff, then sure. Uh, I, would, I would know for sure that speed training would pick up extra club head speed. What I see for most people is when we clean things up, we look at what's going on with the actual swing. I, I, it's not uncommon to see someone pick up five, 10 miles an hour during a session here. Um, and I've done it with myself. So this time last year, and maybe the year before even, I'd be under 100 with the seven iron, even if I was swinging at it really firm. Um, so I can come in here, hit 10 balls, and I'm, I'm already over 100 pretty quickly. So take that for what it's worth, but this is what I've been working on. I've learned a few of these concepts from some very smart people uh, at Swing Catalyst and others, um, and I found it to be really effective, most importantly, in hitting the ball straighter, and as a nice bonus, hitting the ball further.